Hi, my name is Arjun Gupte and I'm a filmmaker and student here at USC. Adil's a friend of mine and he's in this class and he uh, asked me if it could help edit and shoot. Um, and so that's what I'm here for. Uh, I haven't done a lot of documentary work before. I'm mostly into narrative filmmaking, but um, I figure this is a great opportunity to tell a story in real time. So that's what I'm going to try and do. Um, I don't know much about the documentary yet, except that it's about Cuban food, but I figure I should just jump right in. So, yeah, let's, let's do this. Hey, what's hey, up, what's up Arjun? How you doing, man? Yo, Arjun, what's up? How what's you up, doing? Dude? Basically, what we're doing is we're just gonna be going to like a Cuban restaurant yeah, and a of them. yeah, and interviewing them, and then um, we're gonna speak with a Cuban woman in Huntington Beach, and we're gonna talk with her as well. And basically, we want you to just you know film that, like you know, sort of a documentary, that yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Um, for a Spanish class. Does he have like an option to do like right. a movie or something for this? Class? Uh, well, we I didn't mean, want to do like. To a, be honest, dude, we we had to do like a ten-page paper. Yeah, but, but we thought it'd be easier to just you know bullshit it and just yeah. you know do a film. He said we could get a little creative with it, so that's kind well, of what well, we're, we're kind do. of hoping the creative part balances out the uh, yeah you know the quality of the project. Because we're not trying to write a ten-page paper. We're not really trying to write a ten-page <laughs> paper. You need to do paper. This card sheet. Right. Hey, I'm Jake. I'm Adil. And we're gonna be exploring Cuban culture in Los Angeles. How is that? Good? Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, good to go. Hell yeah. Dude, it's probably one of the busiest restaurants. It's not even a restaurant, but like a fucking bakery. Probably have robots making their fucking noodles, I mean, not noodles, strudels. Eat. You can have the breakfast for you. You can take the breakfast for you. I don't do it. I'm staying hungry. I just, I'm just, I'm just trying to make sure my food tastes tastes a little better. <laughs> Arjun's like, camera's always rolling, 24/7. It's not rolling 24/7. I was joking. Adil, you're on navigation duty, my guy. Alrighty, I'll do my best. What the hell are we listening to? You're gonna catch me on camera doing some illegal things. Alright, alright, alright. I, I understand this is a Cuban project, bro, but like... Sick channel. You gotta, you gotta be blocked. Sick! Get idiots! That's what I said. Oh, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> it's, 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 it's hard not to, you know... I mean, it is difficult to put my foot on a pedal. Yeah. And, and uh... Yeah. Sway my arms. Yeah. You know? Dude, she's gonna keep calling. Hello? Hello? Dude, it's, she's about dialing me. She doesn't understand. Can you hold the tripod? Yeah. Alright, I just let her know we're here. And look at that. Porto's. Welcome to Porto's Bakery and Cafe. We're going to be interviewing Miss Beatrice Porto, and she is Rosa Porto's daughter, the one who founded this establishment. So we're going to be learning a lot of new information about Porto. Let's go try some new food. Let's go. Hi, I'm this. Hi. What? Beatrice is? Beatrice. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Is there somewhere so we could sit down? Yeah. Yeah, the this office. would be perfect. <laughs> this is perfect. Thank you so much. <clears throat> All right. So we want to start off just asking um, if you could tell us about the history of Portos and like how it started and when. Well, basically, it really started in Cuba mm -hmm. before we came here. When Castro came to power and we um, decided to leave the island, 
you become the enemy of the state. Also, the government came in and, and told the owner, this is no longer yours, this belongs to the Cuban government. Mm -hmm. So she was out of a job, was sent home. My dad was taken to a labor camp, to a forced labor camp, away from the house. He went from making $180 to $8. She went from making $280 because she ran the office to making zero. So the government didn't care whether we ate or not or starved or not. So she had to reinvent herself. And thanks, you, thanks to her neighbors who started telling her, you've been making your kids cakes forever, why don't you start making them for other people? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly how she started she had to survive. You had to be in the ingredients too, because all this stuff was rationed by a book. So to make a cake, the whole family would pitch in. Your family would pitch in two eggs each, and out of that, she would gather the food that would bring it to my mother. She would make the cake, and then they would pay her with either chickens or beans or rice. So she came here within two months after getting here, tweaking her recipes, trying new butters and milks. She started making them at home with friends and family. And that's the way it started, at home, friends and families, slowly but gradually, decided she decided to open small place, 300 square feet. What was good about us, it was just that those Cuban people that were customers worked in jobs and factories. So they started bringing the Mexicans, the Filipinos, Chinese, all their friends, because when you have a friend, you want to share with your friend a good place to eat. And that's really how we got to where we are. It was never newspaper or there was no social media. It was all word of mouth, one immigrant to the other. Sorry, my mother making cakes at home, but not only cakes. She made the potato balls and the croquettes and the meat pies and the chicken and bananas and the guap pies. She did that all out of the house. Before we went and opened a place, she had fixed the garage. And she was making all these other things that are still the core products that really attract all the people. The thing is when they get here, they buy those and then they see all the other beautiful things that, that we have learned to make. The secret to our success, the reason we have been dying, done so well is because, first of all, the passion that we have for the food. Um, number two, the pricing and the quality. So when you have a chocolate cake here, it's made with the best chocolate in the world. We bring it from Belgium. So you, you go to a fancy bakery and you pay $50 for a cake here, it costs you 25 So it's passion for the food, quality, pricing, and customer service. That's something that we keep uh, working on because we know that the, the new generation expects that. And I think in a nutshell, that's the secret to our success. Of course, hard work, perseverance, but passion, love for what you do. So uh, Miss Betty Porto was very nice and she actually gave us these potato balls and cheese rolls to try and these are the number one and two sellers respectively in the store. Yeah, let's try it. Alright, let's go ahead. I'll try one of these try the as well, rolls. yeah. That's really good. That is really good. That's wow. Really good. That's like sweet. Dude, these are so good. They remind me of the ones my grandma used to make. Yeah? Do they remind you of your grandmother at all? Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess. I haven't, uh, I haven't had one of these in a while. She used to make them before she passed, but... Yeah, it's been a while. All right, so we just tried the two most popular dishes here at Porto's Bakery. We tried the cheese rolls and the potato balls. What did you think of them, Adil? Well, I thought they were both really amazing dishes. You got the sweet with the cheese rolls, and you got the savory with the potato balls. Um, the potato balls were very filling, and the cheese rolls were the perfect complement to them with just the right amount of sweetness. How did you feel? I felt that they were very authentic, which is a hard thing to do here in Los Angeles. There isn't a lot of authentic Cuban cuisine. 
and I, it t still tasted like it was homemade, unlike a lot of these chain restaurants. So I think we'll definitely come back here again sometime soon. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. All, All right. right, where are we off to right now, though? Well, though? we're going to head over to Huntington Beach to meet Ana Felipe, um, a Cuban immigrant who immigrated from Cuba right around the time when Castro took over power. Yeah. All right, let's so, go. Let's go. so confused yeah dude I figured I, I, I sometimes I put my left shoe on my right foot <laughs> <laughs> all right folks Let's hit the I need to look at the road. And I, you literally like told me. Dude, you literally told me. You literally, told, like, you literally told me. I think you're fine. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> it literally has an arrow at the top where it says the direction, bro. Your motherfucker. Wait, is it right or left? Come on, Abel. Get your we shit already together. missed it. <laughs> we missed it. Yeah. Bro. And 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 if, and if I'm and if I'm if I'm putting both y'all on blast, I did this too. I showed it to you too, Archie. Archie yeah. doesn't drive. You you And this is my daughter, she's 56 now. And the daughter, and the daughter, and the grands, and the, and the son. I have here my six granddaughters and my grandson. And these are my great grandkids, which we have there five, uh, six, but the one that was, the tummy is already here. The friend of my daughter, and my daughter was uh, the mommy of Jameson. This is gonna be for the bottom of the tree, but I have to get some connection so I can so I can place that. But uh, yeah, my rosary, you know, is very important to me. And uh, my song in the morning, lo primero que yo hago al despertarme es dar gracias a Dios todos los días, rezarle a todos los santos y agradecerles la vida mía. You know what I mean? First thing that I do in the morning is to pray God give thanks for my life. And that's what I do every time that I come down the bed. Lanes, lanes, lanes. They have two or three lanes. They have, you know, the table to eat. Hi, Jameson, what's good, huh? Jameson, say something. Don't be like that, Jameson. Jameson, oh, go to sleep. He never sleep. Never had a nap. <laughs> A grandma is, is a nanny. And uh, all the kids are, you know, they cheap babysitter and they got you know. Alright, so when and why did you leave Cuba? I uh, I left Cuba in January 10, 1961, with uh, my mom and my two sons, five and two years old. So we left because uh, thank you to God. My father was very wise and he had a very good business, but he was thinking in me and in my kids. And he says to us, to my husband and me, we have to leave the country, this is communist, and we're gonna lose it anyway, everything that we have. So might as well to leave it and give a good education to these two kids. And my, my son, the middle one, he says to me that I was the one inventing the revolution because I wanted to come to this and we're, Free people for this, like, we just, you know, everybody have the passport. Cause, so I never supposed that in 55 I was saying that, and in January 10, 1961, I was in California. La la, my great grandkids called me la la. But I was very active with my grandkids, with seven grandkids, and with seven great grandkids. I have three that live, you know, kind of far away. But with the four that I call the first generation of great grandkids, they live close by, Lake Forest and right here in Costa Mesa. So I'm babysitting all the time with pleasure. It's not, it's not a obligation for me. It's a pleasure for me to do it. Family first. Family first. I used to call my abuela Lela. Lela. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, th I think my, my great you know, he started to call me like that because he heard, you know, the, the, the mother called me abuela. So he heard la, la, la. So I was la, la. La la. And um, what would you say you missed most about Cuba? 
the whole thing, my whole life, my, my, uh, my, uh, when I was little, uh, the way that my parents were, uh, the, the neighbors that we have, that they care of each other, uh, everything, my, my music, my, my way of, my way of living, even if we are, you know, we were middle class and we work hard, uh, it was, uh, everything, but at the same time, as soon as I got to the United States, I put in my mind what my father told me, you know, we cannot look back. Do you believe in the American dream, or would you say that your success is largely because your family is a hard-working family? I think the American dream, you put it yourself. Like I tell my grandkids and everybody, don't tell me that you're working too hard. I am the wrong person for you to tell me that, because I work a lot. And I feel proud, and I will, if I have to do it, I will do it again. So the American dream, you make it. Any dream, you make it. Like what this says, imagination. If you have imagination, you have all the doors open in your life. Because if I don't have my cup of coffee, wah, okay. How much sugar do you put in your coffee? I don't put. I don't put no? only only in the espresso, only in the Cuban, only only in the Cuban coffee, in the espresso. Because in American coffee, I don't put any sugar. I drink it like that, with cream, but just no sugar. But in the Cuban coffee, in the espresso coffee, I put sugar. I need that sugar. Two, two spoons, two little spoons. My mom would put like, in the Cuban coffee, she'd put like nine <laughs> scoops. Oh, like, no. you know, disgusting amount <laughs> more sugar than coffee. <laughs> when you get your mom over here, you have to bring it, okay? <laughs> okay. You have to bring it. You have to. She said my daughter, you know, yeah. she's the age more, more or less than my yeah. daughter. Yeah, oh, that would be so great would if be. I could talk to her. It would be so great. That would be awesome. Yeah, just tell to, tell to give me a phone or whatever. Well, next call time me. she visits me, we'll take a trip down here. Or, please, yeah. please, please. It's made me nostalgic. Really? Of what? It reminds me of visiting my grandma in Miami. She's, really? Yeah, dude, like the house looks the same. Like, She's a really welcoming lady too. Yeah, it's just Cuban culture, dude. Like, is everyone just open like that? I don't know. That's like how my family is down in Miami, and it feels so similar. The way she's talking, the yeah, things she's, she does. She's she's very homey, and she she's, she, uh, she she puts a lot of emphasis on on family ideals. I'd say is that is that, that how how Cuban how traditions are? I think it's I think with everything they went through with the whole Cuban Revolution and stuff like that, and having being like forced to become refugees, you know. Yeah. They really look at what's important, and like her, obviously, and my grandma, you know, realize that that's family. Definitely. You know? Yeah, I miss her. I see like the same thing. We're still admiring the view. I yeah. feel like it's yeah. so open and free. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. I had a long time that I haven't gone. I'm upstairs. Like this one, one right here? Five, one, six times eight. the price. <laughs> <laughs> and they, he almost don't live here, never. Mm. Almost all this house I call the ghost town. Because wow. almost everybody is just at uh, second homes. Jameson, ven mi hijito. Jameson. Hi. Come here, get, get your shoes. We're going to the Cuban restaurant. I'll give you the phone so you can play. Okay? Okay. Well, I'm not giving you YouTube. I'll, I'll, tell, the, tell the kids to put the video up because I don't know how to put it. Okay, so now we're following Miss uh, Felipe to Bella Cuba, an authentic Cuban restaurant of her choice. Um, it was more of a spontaneous decision to just um, go and try Cuban food and um, judging from her experience with uh, Cuban food, Cuban cuisine, we expect this to be uh, pretty decent and we called up the restaurant right now and we're about to film over there too, so it should yeah, be fun. Pretty excited, nice little adventure to go on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really nice lady. Honestly, she she's is. the nicest dude. Nice. She's, you know, she was very open about her home. She wasn't wasn't hesitant at all to like you know let us upstairs, let us on the roof even. I think it's like that national pride thing. Like although so. Cuba, like she's I not proud so. of the way the country is right now. She's still.
still proud of her still heritage proud of her and like yeah. yeah exactly and she knows that I'm Cuban and, and so we like you know stick together yeah especially when like she treats me she's treating me like family it's honestly right, beautiful right. and like especially when when you ask what part uh, of Cuba do you miss most she said all of it yeah. so you know it's not that she doesn't love the country she just doesn't love the way it's run We're gonna try some good food, Adil. Dude, I cannot wait, dude. I hope you like it. I think. I mean, I'm. I'm not sure how how I'll handle no spice, because I'm. I'm, yeah. I'm really a, a heavy spice guy. Yeah, I know. I like spice, but it's just something about the Cuban food it just doesn't eat it. I believe it. I mean, you guys substitute salt and and lime. Yeah, salt spice. and lime. A lot of salt and lime. Honestly, my mom drenches trenches it in line. We, have to, we just have to find parking, right? So I should stop following her ass and just no, keep, fuck keep, with that keep, bird. So he's such a good boy, Jameson. Wow, this is great. <laughs> Vamos, mi niño. Vamos. Estamos llegando a Bella Cuba. We're ready to eat our plates. We are going to introduce this uh, job guys from the university, and uh, we're going to try. To, I'm going to try to for him to, to try three or different, three or four different things, and two or three different desserts, so they know what is the Cuban food about it. Yeah, we're excited to try it. Right? Yes, yeah, my first time eating Cuban food. I'm looking uh, forward, especially to the the ropa vieja and um, some of the desserts that Cuban food has to. Has yeah, to offer. and you have to try the Cuban coffee afterwards, right? Right. I heard oh, that's yeah. really strong, though. Yeah. No, I might. I might try. <laughs> Like it. You're gonna like it. You're gonna like it. You will be awake. You will be awake at night. Yeah. But, but you, you, have, you have to try it. You have to try it. All right, definitely. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Let's go in. Let's go. We just ate at Baya Cuba. Anna was nice enough to pay for our meals. Uh, we got to try a little bit of everything. And Adil, what do you think? This since this is your first time trying Cuban food. Right, so personally, I thought the uh, the ropa vieja was really good. Um, that was the beef, the, the steak dish, yeah, right? Yeah, that was the steak dish. And I thought the arroz con pollo was also very delicious, mm -hmm. and that's just chicken with rice. Right. Um, and then, most specifically, I liked the, the flan and the tres leches the best. I thought those, yeah, those desserts really stood out to me. And then the, the Cuban coffee was surprisingly very, very it's strong. Very strong. It's, it's a small strong. cup like this big, but I could only drink it in sips. Like, yeah. Yeah, there was no way I was drinking it. I'm kind of amped up on it right now. I can, really? I can feel really? it. Yeah. No, it's very strong. <laughs> but yeah, no, we had a great meal. We did. And we, did. Um, we left things open with Anna so that we can, you know, maybe meet up with her in the future just as like uh, a friend, grandmother figure, that type of thing. Right. Um, we had a really great time. That was very nice of her to pay for us. Except, you know, me and us into her life, like her life and her family, and, and she barely knows us. And like, I, she bought us lunch, and she like, wants us to come over more. And I don't know. My my grandmother was the same way. Like, she would just help people, and um, like she. Like there's this family that she like took in, and uh, you know helped pay for because they had kids and stuff like that. And once she passed, she left them the house so that they could 
have somewhere to live, you know, once they came over from Cuba. And, uh, I don't know. It's just, she was just so nice to us. today thank you for helping us out yeah definitely dude honestly I I was just looking to like I don't know bullshit this project but I ended up having a really good time and I don't know I feel like I learned a lot I don't know so like all day, like, you know, even to Anna, I was, I, I was saying, you know, I was, I'm Cuban, I'm Cuban, you know, I, I, I eat Cuban food all the time, you know, and I do eat Cuban food all the time, and I do consider myself Cuban, but like, hey man, you don't have to, like, record this, it's just like, you and me, okay? Alright, sure, man. Um, and like, I am Cuban by culture, but, um, you know, I have I have two moms, and uh, my biological mom is Jewish, and my non-biological mom is Cuban, and she wanted us to, you know, feel close with her. So she like the sperm donor she chose was of Spanish heritage because like uh, you know she's. She wanted us to feel close to her and like, you know, a few generations before her family was in Cuba, they were in Spain, right? So I'm Spanish, not Cuban, but I was raised Cuban and I don't identify at all with being Spanish. Um, but I feel Cuban, but like, you know, when I'm hanging out with my family, you know, they're all, they all look, you know, Cuban and I look, I don't know fucking Swedish or something and uh, I don't know you know like in preschool I went to all Spanish speaking preschool Spanish was my first language I um, you know but then my family moved to like the suburbs and for kindergarten you know I was in like an all white town and nobody was speaking Spanish and I didn't want to be different so I just you know stopped speaking Spanish and I never really got it back and you know my mom always told me when I was younger I used to hate black beans like I thought they were like just the nastiest thing ever my mom used to be like you're not a real Cuban you don't like black beans and like I don't know I'm not a real Cuban you know man I went into this thinking that, you know, I was just gonna, like, bullshit the assignment and stuff, but I think, like, I don't know, subconsciously or something, I chose to do this because I wanted to feel, I don't know, closer with, you know, my, the Cuban culture I grew up in, you know, because I never really felt Cuban, and I never really felt Spanish, and 
I don't know, after today, I just feel like the way Anna accepted me, you know, into her family and like her life like that. I think I, I don't know, I feel more connected than I have before in a long time. And, um, it was really, it was a really nice day. Yeah, it was, it's a really nice day. Okay, so, um, I sent them the first cut of the film, um, it's, uh, I don't know how they're gonna react to it, but, um, like, I, 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 okay, I, I don't know, let me just listen to see what happens. Hey, what's up, guys? What's up, Archer? Um, uh, kind of wanted to talk about, um, the things you shot, uh, unfortunately, yeah. We don't think it's up to standards, dude. What do you mean it's not up to standards? I thought it was dude, really good. It's, you have to change it. You, what do you mean? I will <laughs> change what? Like, it's the, it's such a cool film. Dude, we were making, you know, just like a, a documentary about like Cuban food and culture. That's it. We're in none of this other bullshit. You have us on tape saying that we're bullshitting a film assignment so that we can get out doing a paper. You have me on camera talking about page count. That was the point, like, in the beginning, you didn't want to do it, and you just wanted to do it for the grade, but then you actually changed. Arjun, you recorded private moments and put that in the film. I can't turn that in. That is not what I want my class to see, what I want the professor to see. You can't put them on blast like that. Dude, dude I'm serious. Everyone. You can't fucking do that. Like, I understand if it's in front of you, but like in front of everyone. Dude, are you recording right now? Is the camera on? Yeah. Dude, dude just, turn it off. That's, that's twice. Again? Now. Turn it off. Is it off? Yeah, it's off. Dude, you have to change it. I'm dead serious right now. You can't do that for our film. This is our project, not your project. You're helping us out. Our project. Now, please change it so that we can submit this assignment to class and get an A the way we're supposed to. You have to stop looking at it like it's a fucking assignment, man. Just like, it's a piece of art, for fuck's sake. You, like, you just want an A? Come on, man. This is about life. This is about you changing. It's about embracing your Cuban heritage, man. It's such bullshit. What do, you, what do you mean? You go on again, A, fucking A, dude. Jesus Christ, man. We, we just we we made change. We made an emotion. We made a piece of art here. Can you guys not realize that? Arjun, listen, man. As a friend, I'm telling you, like, this is this is not gonna do wonders for our grade. This is actually going to like hurt our grade. Fuck your grade, I, man. What is wrong with you? Arjun, this is all about the grade. This is school. We don't give a shit about the art or whatever you're talking about. This is the grade, and that's what we need right now. That's all we were asking you for. We it's didn't ask you to do any of this. Less less you know cut it out Fine, too, I'll man. do it. Okay. Just, okay. The right. assignment is due tomorrow. Okay. Send it to I'll us do it, all right. ASAP. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so, I'm not gonna change it, because they don't realize that what this is is art. Like, whether he realizes it or not, Jake, he changed over this, and he had a genuine moment. And I'm gonna put this in too, and look guys, I'm sorry, okay? I, I, I'm really sorry about your grade, but you're gonna thank me. You're gonna thank me later, and you're gonna realize that what I did was the right thing, because if I changed it, I'd be doing a disservice to to everyone, the art community, and, and them too, and, and you. I'm sorry, but I have to do it, okay? It's just, 
I couldn't live with myself if I didn't do it. So, sorry, but you're welcome. <laughs>